Yo, what is up guys, it's Grim, and today I just wanted to thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. If you look right now, it should be at 100, it might have gone up to like, I don't know, 101, might drop down to 99, something like that, but you know, you know how YouTube is. But we hit 100, we hit 100 subscribers, which is absolutely insane, thank you guys so much for that, that's absolutely incredible to me, I never thought I'd get this far, and just getting to 100 is big enough for me. So let, let's try, I don't, I don't know, let's try to get to 500, dude, that would be, that would be really cool. Or even a thousand that I actually get money in. Ooh, ooh, I can actually do stuff with this now. So yeah, thank you guys so much for subscribing and all that. And yeah, I guess let's just um get into the normal video for today. So today I'm going to be for 100 subscribers, obviously. Ranking the JoJo parts, because apparently I haven't done that yet. And I kind of want to do it because I guess, um, I don't know, I wanted to do it. <laughs> I haven't done it, and I think it's just kind of a normal thing to do. Because a lot of JoJo fans have their favorite parts, and I, I uh, made a video about part 3, right? Uh, why I love part 3. But other than that, I didn't really make one. And, uh, by the way, this isn't through all the parts. This is just going to be parts 1 through 5, because, you know, part 7 and 8 I haven't read yet. So, yeah, I guess let's just get right into it. By the way, this is going to be ascending, so it's going to be the lowest up to the... You know the best and you know i might have a controversial opinion so i don't hate on me for having my own opinion like i don't know i, I just I, I like my own opinions dude i have my own opinions and i have i have uh different opinions for the manga from the anime but this is going to be going over the anime because you know i make more anime content than manga content on here but i do pretty much uh, a, lot, a lot of manga stuff too so yeah let's just get right into my rankings so and uh, i guess should i should i rank i'll just say them in order i guess so, um, at the bottom is gonna be part one, Phantom Blood. I think this is kind of obvious because, you know, part one is the underrated, well, not necessarily underrated, but it's the worst part. I don't care how you look at it, it's the worst part, but, yeah, is it, it depends on the person, obviously, because I think, um, a lot of the people, like, I, apparently Critical likes parts one and two more than three, four, and five, which, no judgment, dude, but, like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I like I don't I don't like part one as much as the other parts, but I do see its charm. I do definitely like it, just not as much as the other parts, and that's why it's down here. I do like Jonathan a lot, and I like Speedwagon. But I think the Joe Bro, you know, Zapelli was a little bit too dry and the art style looks I, I like the art style, it has its own charm, but it looks a lot like Fist at the North Star, but more cartoony. And that's for the manga, obviously. And Hamon is just kind of not my thing, but I do, I do get the appeal of it. I just like stands better. I like, I like JoJo when it's weird. I like JoJo when it's actually JoJo. Not to say that this isn't a good part. I put this at 10 out of 10 on my analyst. It's still very good. It's still a very good part. It's just comparing it to other parts, not as good. And I think the main reason is because it was a Rocky first part. He was experimenting. And I'm actually surprised that part one sold as well as it did because, you know, today people hate it. Which I don't know why people hate it, but I can see how people don't like it. So, yeah, I guess moving on to the next part, we're going to talk about part two. Now, again, this is the same thing here. I actually love part two. Part two is insane. But, you know, it's not my favorite part. And I don't, I don't know if that makes me weird because I've heard a lot of, you know, people's favorite parts is part two. But there's just better parts, in my opinion. Part two is definitely good. It doesn't have anything going against it it's just not my favorite part because you know it's hamon and it's one of Araki's earlier parts too and it just doesn't compare to stands in my opinion now that's not the only reason why either like i like um obviously it starts getting really weird here with cars playing lisa lisa's a guitar and you know a literal nazi in the gang of part two but i think i think the main uh appeal of part two is joseph and, and that's it and it's just joseph um, that's the entire reason why part two is good, and I think that's a bit weird. I'd say in the anime, the animation is alright, and the, the voice acting is insane. I think Joseph's voice actor is one of the best voice actors ever, especially after seeing that performance with the part six announcement. Oh my god, I've already covered that, but that, that was insane. And I'm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep talking about that every time I bring up part two because it was really good. Like that voice actor, you know, he has the he has the emotion there. He definitely you know, committed to being uh, jo Joseph in that. Moving on from part two, which is, you know, maybe a bit of a controversial pick, um, I'm gonna go with part five, but th this is this is where it sometimes changes. I guess I'll go with part four, because I like part four and five very evenly, like, they're both really good. I just think that part four and five, like, it depends on the day, honestly, because part five is really good, but part four is also really good, so I'd prob I'm probably gonna say part four. Um, 
after part two. Because part four is a little, compared to Golden Wind, it's a little bit lackluster. That's not, that's not the word I necessarily want to use, but it's lacking something that part five has. And I guess that's the fact that it maybe takes place in a small town, and that's why I don't like part four. I think part four is just, it's good, it's really good, it's, it's amazing, it's an amazing part. But it's not as good as the other parts, in my opinion. Or, well, I guess it's better than parts 1, 2. You know what I mean, though? Like, the ranking, you know, I'm, I'm just going to refer to it as, like, other parts from here on out. The ones higher up on the list. But I think that it compares to the other parts very well. It just doesn't... It has its, it has its own thing, and I don't think the own thing was done right. Because I don't like how it takes place in the one small town. And you could argue that uh, part 5 takes place in a small town, and part 1 does, too. But part 5 really doesn't take place in a small town, part 2 definitely doesn't, and I, I don't think part 1 really does either, I mean, it kind of, it kind of takes place in the same area of the world, but that's pretty much part part 5 too, so I, I guess I would say the only one that is part 4, and I think part 8 does too, um, actually. But I, I definitely like the traveling aspect of JoJo, so that's one thing I don't like about it. I also don't like the fact that the villain is kind of not insane for a serial killer. Like, sure he has a hand fetish, and like, every serial killer has something really weird that goes on, but like, he doesn't seem like a serial killer to me. And that's why I, lo I love Kira as a villain, but he just, he doesn't do it like I would like him to do it. Now that's not saying I want Kira to be some really, you know, disgusting human being, which, you know, he kind of is, but he's not, he doesn't scream serial killer to me. When I when I think of a serial killer, I don't think of Kiryu Yoshikage, I would think of somebody else, like... I mean, anime doesn't really have that many to begin with, but... If we're talking about serial killers, I don't think that Kira fits up with the rest of... God, the serial killer guidelines, I... You know what I'm trying to say? Like, he doesn't fit with the mesh, he doesn't, like, fit with the other serial killers. And I think that kind of makes him... And he kind of drags his whole part down just because, you know. I'd, and again, I don't think there's a single bad villain in this show. I don't, or manga, anime, whatever. But Kira just seems a little bit too lacking to me because he doesn't seem like, like Araki definitely put thought into him, but he doesn't seem like the other JoJo villains where like Diavolo seems like a mafia, like a mafia boss. He seems like, like he would be a mafia boss. But somebody like Kira doesn't really seem like a serial killer, if you know what I mean. Because he's not really that, like, you know how Dio is really, really, like, psychotic, I guess you could say? Like, he is, he is really insane, and he takes everything to the extreme. Kira doesn't do that, and serial killers usually take stuff to extremes. So I think that Kira just doesn't do that part right, and that's why part 4 doesn't compare as much to part 5 as I know, you know, like, it should. But part four is definitely still good. It's definitely still a great part. It is one of my favorites, I mean, obviously, and it's one of my favorite anime. I guess if you consider all the different parts, different anime, it's definitely in like the top three because you know my <laughs> my top three. You, you never guess what they are, but um, I count JoJo just like a whole as one. And part four is definitely good. It's just not the best that it could be. Also, I really like Rohan, so that makes up for it, and I also really like um, a lot of the other characters, I like the stands, and I do like the music, I like the, the feel of Morio, but I don't like how it's trapped in one location, how the serial killer isn't really a serial killer. And I also don't like how his dad just, like, acts like, you know, he's a little... I, I don't I don't know what word I want to describe him, but, you know, he, he's just a, like a pest. He's just He's just more annoying than he is helpful, but at the same time, he's like, oh my lord, Kiryu Shikage, it just it doesn't seem like... You know, it seems more like he's, I don't know, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just looking too deep into it, but I think part four is just not as good as part five and, you know, the rest of the parts. Now, obviously, the next one on the list is part five. Now, part five is amazing because, obviously, the villain is insane, and I don't know why people don't like Diavolo as much. I think he's definitely not one of the better JoJo villains, but he's not the worst either. He's definitely really good, and I don't know why people don't like Diavolo necessarily, because he's not a bad villain, he's just not a gr well, he's a great one, but I don't know, I don't know what I'm looking for here, but he's not, he's not, um, as good as he could be, I guess. And I said the same thing with Kira, but this guy does a lot more than Kira does. I think Kars is one of the better villains, and Dio too. And we'll get into, uh, Dio eventually, but, you know, um, I think that overall, Diavolo fits with his gang, like, the, the part really well. And the gang fits with the part really well. I think 
every death makes a lot of sense and where they take place and I don't think that they were meaningless because um oh by the way spoiler alert um, for parts three through like five um I guess I forgot to say that but you know it's Jojo so um I think that Kakyoin's death was kind of meaningless and that really was not that cool to me because I think Kakyoin could have lived I really think he could have but because I, I mean I see memes about it all the time and it was like Kakyoin uh Kakyoin died to figure out something a rat could in like 15 seconds <laughs> like the rat figured it out but Kakyoin couldn't I I don't see that I just I and I get like the Iraqi forgot thing but I don't think Iraqi forgot I think he did that intentionally because that's that's really weird Dude, that's that's just really weird to me how Kakyoin had to die for something that a rat could figure out and you know, I think I think that his death was very meaningless. While as Abakio's death really contributed to what the gang needed, like what when he died, like not only did he keep fighting on, but like it made sense because he was by himself. It made sense that he would have died because his stand is not offensive. He can't do anything, even if he knew that um, Dapio was behind him. All he could do was run, and even then, Dapio would see that and he could find a way to cut him off or something. So I just don't see why. I don't see why his death would be meaningless in that sense. I think uh, Bakio's death was very, very good on Araki's part. And I think that part five definitely takes a lot of inspiration from, you know, I think I think he does the, um, like as Araki does with any part, he takes a lot of inspiration from the other countries and he, he knows what he's doing with the culture and everything. And I think that's really cool. Now that I know a lot about Italian culture, but from what I've seen, like it's, it's pretty accurate for, you know, a manga. And I think Araki takes pride in his work like nobody else does, because he he goes down into the minute details of everything. And I think that shows in part five with how I don't know everything everything just happens. And I think that's really cool. I think that's why part five is definitely one of my favorites. And I like the general feel of it. I love every character in part five. Mista is one of my favorite characters in anime. Period. And so is Jorno. So are everybody else. I think that a lot of the characters in part 5 are some of the best characters in anime. And Abakio, despite being a hothead, is actually the Bakugo trait done right. <laughs> I mean, Bakugo is just angry to be angry, while Abakio hates Jorno for a reason. And it's because it, it's because he's like an old geezer and Jorno's like the, you know, the new generation. I think that's really cool. And I think that is cool how he can actually, you know, make characters seem like they work with each other, unlike, you know, my, my hero. <clears throat> so yeah. I really like how part 5 does that. And now since we're going a little bit over here, uh, my number one is part 3. Part 3 is my favorite part, hands down. I don't think anything will ever replace it up until Steel Ball Run. I'm saying this because part 3 is just so good, the villain is so good, the feel of everything is so good. Despite Kakyoin's death being meaningless, it was executed really well. And so were a lot of, uh, like, you know, um, Abdal and Iggy and everything. And I really like part three because of the weirdness. Because it's weird. That seems like a weird 80s sitcom adventure thing. And I really like that because it feels like it takes place in the 80s. It doesn't feel like it takes place in 40 years in the future when, you know, like, if, if uh, Attack on Titan, right, it's saying, like, oh, it takes place in, like, in the future. Th that doesn't... I mean, Attack on Titan doesn't feel like it's in the future, it feels like it's in the past. And I mean, obviously, you know, the implications and everything that goes along with Attack on Titan, it makes sense that it's there, but I think that JoJo's does part 3 so well in the 80s that it just, and I, I assume Araki was like, I'm not sure how old he was in the 80s, but he definitely knows the culture and American culture in the 80s. And it shows because he uses a lot of the songs from the 80s with the, you know, the bands, with the sands and everything. And I think it's really good. I think Araki does this part the best. And I think it deserves all the hype it gets. And I don't know if this is really the most critically acclaimed part, but in my opinion, it's the best. I just think, I think Jotaro is the best Jojo, Dio is the best villain, and everything about this part is amazing. I've already made like a 30 minute video on it, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. You can just check that out if you want to, because I don't want to keep repeating myself on the same things over and over and just using the content for minutes and watch time, because I really think that this part is probably the best part that Araki, well, I don't know about we'll ever make because Steel Ball Run again, I've heard it's very good, but, you know, it's it's one of the best parts, in my opinion, so far. It's probably, it 
pretty much the peak of anime to me right now. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for 100 subscribers. Let's see if we can get to 500, dude. That would be absolutely insane, like I was saying before. 500 subscribers would mean a lot to me. So without, uh, you know, anything else, I'll see you the next one.